Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee, and as you can tell, my hands have been replaced with, like, pony hooves from Metal Ponyland. No, I'm just kidding, these are buckets. Why are they buckets? Well, because there's axolotls back here. Baxolotls, if you will. If we can scoop some of them up. Oh, there's a baby little blue one. Or, like, a, maybe that's technically a white one. I don't really know the difference between the axolotls, which is why... In my quest to open a shop on the server, I've decided to create an axolotl shop where we don't have to know the difference between the axolotls. We'll just put a bunch of axolotls in a hopper connected to a dispenser and let it randomize. I figure we'll call it a, I don't know, mixolotl or something. That's a work in progress. Maybe maybe we'll add some fancy flashing lights and call it discolotl. I don't know. But core cons- oh, oh no, I accidentally let one go. I let one go. Where is it? It's in the pillar. Okay, get the other one out of our offhand. Oh, no, 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 no. I've got too many axolotls in my inventory and not enough water buckets. Where is he? There we go. We got him. We got him. We got him. Okay. Okay. We're going to just go ahead and get our armor back on before we axolotl dentally die in a water pillar, which would be very silly. Also, I need to update my wordle. Every time I update my world, I'm going to go down there and look for more axolotls because they seem to spawn non-stop in that cave. I've got a whole bunch of them in kind of various locations, uh, chests and whatnot, kind of mixed up in there. But anyway, if you haven't seen False's latest video, she has revealed our plan to put a shopping district on the server adjacent... Oh, I forgot to say howdy, Scar. I was almost away from keyboard. That would have been my mistake. Okay, hold on. So adjacent to kind of this area here, we have this big old donut going on. And I'm realizing I probably should have brought more ender pearls in case I end up in the cold snow. You know the one. But I think if we just ender pearl high enough over here, we'll be able to look down into a beautiful... Donut made of snowy mountains, or a snow nut, if you will. Uh, and let's see, somebody's already claimed this. Bears. Bears claimed this. Oh, yeah, we should say hi to Tango. Howdy, Tango. Who's also somehow... Uh, oh, wow. I was going to say, there's a ravine here. But hey, there's also iron for more buckets. And if there's one thing I need right now... It's more buckets, because every bit of... I, I got so much iron helping Jevin the other day in, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Hermits Helping Hermits. We dug out a gigantic area for him. And... Whoa! Maybe what we need to do is go up here real quick and... Try to gather more of that so that we can have enough buckets for our mixed-up axolotl shop. Eventually, I'll probably have to learn the names of the different colors of axolotl, but that's not what we call in the business world a minimum viable product. We are going to get the most smallest viable product when it comes to an axolotl shop that you could imagine. Having escaped from that ravine and restocked everything, here's where we are. The southwest corner supposedly, according to some of the other hermits, there's some sort of cave down here that we're being encouraged to build in. However, there is no cave entrance. There's just a vague suggestion to dig in the southwest corner. I have a Silk Touch Efficiency 5 pickaxe and an elytra. So I figure we should be fine if we just dig straight down, right? That's that's always safe in Minecraft, right? Right? That's That's fine. Nothing bad ever happens. We have gone too far for my scaffolding to get me back up. <gasps> okay. I think I found the cave that they said we should put the shops in. We did it. We did it, people. This is the cave that the shops go in. Okay. Already. Okay, that's fine. There's a silverfish! 
the creeper. What? I didn't even know that a creeper could unleash a silverfish. What is going on? I am not okay with any of this. Uh. So we are going to frantically and diligently attempt to light as much of this as is possible while being completely panicked. Maybe we'll stumble onto some exposed iron. Da 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 da. Yeah, you love to see it. That's a future axolotl bucket. Okay. This place is huge. And there's a skeleton shooting at me. The more we light this up, the better it's going to be for everybody. Another creeper now is... Oh, hey, there's a diamond. Boop. Hey, creeper, you going to expose more diamonds over here? No. Maybe. No. Okay. Well, now we have a diamond to go shopping with. That's cool. When the other shop's open, everybody's going to be jealous. They're like, hey, Joe, where'd you get that diamond? And be like, I found it on the ground. Because I'm really attuned to the ground. It's important in it. Look at how high up that is. Ah. I've made the first diamond in the underground shopping district, and no one can ever take that away from me. You know what? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back to where we found that diamond. Okay, excuse me, Mr. Zombie. I need to just cut past you right here and continue lighting on my way back. You know what? I think that that's a good omen diamond. We're going to light this up so that nothing immediately kills us. I say running out of torches and then not looking for creepers. We're, we're going to light up around and above that little area there. And we're going to claim that as the location of... The first axolotl shop. Once we... There's a lot of those guys. That is more than I would like. Okay. Let's regroup. We're going to eat a quick potato. Quick potato. It's like a baked potato. But took longer or shorter. Okay. I wish you could pre-write signs. I would pre-write a sign and go throw it down there real quick. But instead, we got to deal with that skeleton there. What weapons do we have? No weapons. No ranged weapons, anyway. Okay, they're not going to despawn when it daytime hits, either. Okay, I think I'm out of their range. So, real quick, we're just going to put in a, well, a solid stone pillar here. Nope, that's not a pillar. We gotta keep the lava away. Keep the lava at our face. Face your fears. And my fears are the lava. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little sign here. Or we're gonna we're gonna create a little scaffold thing here. Whoops. So that people know that this is this is a human made thing. Wow, a squid just fell out of the sky. At least I know I can get more squid ink. So I'm not sure if I'm going to spell mixolotls with a Y or an I yet, but we'll worry about that next. I am really, really far down here. Okay. Presumably we can climb up those water pillars while getting shot by skeletons, but we can also use our tri trident as well as an ender pearl to ender pearl jump out of here he says bravely look at that now we're all the way back up to this level boy those ender pearl trident jumps are fantastic you can see down there where we lit up that's looking good i think there's a little bit of exposed moonlight there Let's see if we can get over there. We can see maybe some of the exposed sky. Nope, no exposed sky. That was just a lighting glitch. I'm going to have a hard time figuring out 
where I dug down in here, aren't I? That's going to be a potential issue for me that we can revisit. Um, oh, there's like three creepers there. Next problem. Hey, this is looking promising. Look at this. We're hitting dirt. <sighs> the sky! With, like, almost the perfect number of... Whoa, look at that! In terms of an estimate... Hold on. In terms of an estimate, I think I dug in... Oh, it was here. That was... That's really close. I'm going to add a quick sign. I kind of want to see how hard it is to go back in and back out. But realistically, I know that I've got materials to go gather for the shop build. So I should just really do that first. But also, if I ender pearl straight down here, where exactly does that drop me? Okay, so I'm in this level of the lush caves. Uh-oh. So then from there, we can go to this pond. Oh, dang it. Why am I going to the upper pond? That's not really strictly necessary. And then from here, boom, we're back out. That wasn't bad at all. Let's just go ahead and uh, go get those materials we need for our build. Time skip. Welcome back to my axolotl pond. Though it might be empty at the moment, my heart is full of dreams. And I've been dreaming about how to build the shop down there in that big cave we had, thinking perhaps maybe we use this thinking cave as a prototype in space, right? So let's say that we wanted to make a big pixel art axolotl bucket. What does that look like? So first we put up a reference axolotl here. So we can just look at it and count pixels. What if we create six across to make that bottom line right there? Then that got me thinking too, though. Like, what if... That's five. What if we, for example, had the axolotl shop be kind of a intersection of two pieces of pixel art, right? Kind of like the roses like the flowers in Minecraft. or Oh, actually, the grass would be an example of this. You see, it kind of makes an X on the ground with the same texture twice, right? What if we had two axolotl buckets that intersected to make one big fake 3D axolotl bucket? That's very Minecraft. I don't know if it'll be very good or not, but it's very Minecraft. However, we don't have enough stuff to make that yet. We've got some red dye, we've got some of this, but I think we're going to need to go and gather some more colorful blocks in order to... Oh! Speaking of gathering colorful things, instant axolotls. See, this is why we would do our brainstorming down here. Oh no! You, you don't don't climb out. You'll get, you'll get sad. Where'd the other one go? Boom. Whoops. It's really hard to grab these. There we go. So if we keep doing our brainstorming and prototyping down here, like so, we'll keep having random axolotl spawns. That seems pretty handy to me. In the meantime, though, we need to go ahead. This isn't quite a bubble vader yet in that there are no bubbles in it, but one day. Right now, it's more of a trident vader. But, you know, that allows me to just come out here. Oh, I got a new sign here that says down to the thinking cave. But then up... Oh! What is this? It looks like it's that time of year again. You know, April is just full of so many holidays. Let's see what we got here. Easter egg hunt. That's a crafting bench. I know who wrote this book. Wait, does it say who wrote this book if I hover over it? It says iJevin. So we got to do our best iJevin impersonation. Welcome to the Hermit's Craft Easter egg hunt. Objective. In each of your Easter baskets, you will find a book and your eggs. Your goal is to hide one of each of your eggs using invisible light on frames in each of the hermit spaces listed in your book. Scoring. 
Your scoring will be the total number of eggs hidden minus the ones found. Example, 18 eggs hidden and 5 found. Your score would be 13. Unlucky. Tiebreaker. Egg hunt. Using a special egg I had made, the hermits who have tied will have a 15 minute egg hunt to find as many eggs at spawn as possible. Most eggs found wins. I have somehow drifted from Austria into the Irish Sea with this accent, much like every accent I attempt. So, contest entry fee, one diamond block. Ooh, ooh I have only got five diamonds. And I need to get... Okay, I've got till the 11th to pay for that. So, yeah. We're going to do this, but I might need to go mining or sell some axolotls first. Time skip. Just as I was wondering how I would pay to join the Hermitcraft Easter egg hunt, what is this? This is a diamond block. I would love to say that I earned this selling axolotls, because I really want to sell some axolotls this episode. But in fact, my friend XP Crafted dropped by earlier when I was uh, reinstalling Windows on my computer and picked up a couple of name tags that I offered XB in exchange for this full diamond block. So now that we have this full diamond block, we can just rush right on over to iJevin's place and sign up for... Oh falling out of a tree we can sign oh yeah that's because none of these things are on we really don't need the gold helmet that's that's more of a um you know oh hello a creeper i hope you're not busy over here i can't believe we didn't hear him hiss hopefully my mob sounds aren't off because that'll be a problem for you know future joe but we're gonna head over here to jevin's easter egg to trade this block of diamond in for a seat at the table. Whoa. Now, I have maintained my current Rick Astley skin here because apparently when Jevin hired uh, the artist to commission the uh, Easter egg for the event, the artist didn't realize April Fool's was happening, and so Jevin got back an egg with me as Rick Astley. And so I want to be a good sport and I want to transition from Rick rolling to egg rolling here as part of this contest. So we're going to say, at Joe Hills. Going to put that in there. Cleo the Unhideable. X best at this game. The true winner, Perlo. The winner, Zadaf. And Hypno. Oh, wow. We have to really come up with something good here. There we go. The excellent at Joe Hills. So we're going to go ahead and drop that in the sign up there. And we need to get on our way. We have a whole bunch of dispensers here that we're going to use to dispense axolotls. Oh no, we need to use droppers. I think the dispensers will just dump axolotls out on the people. Maybe that's better. Okay, let's, you know, let's try it both ways. Time skip. Well, folks, my idea to have this kind of be an intersecting diagonal, I didn't fully build it out yet. But I think I'm pretty sure that it's not going to work as is. Like, the block palette I've been playing with, I feel like I'm good at block palettes. Scar's not good at skeletons. Let's make sure he's okay. Um, but, like... I feel like maybe instead of having this cave inward, maybe it would be better if we had it kind of cave outward. Oh no, Scar left the game. Maybe he's really not okay. Oh boy. So here's what I'm thinking. Is I'm thinking, what if we have this cave outward? Wait, we could actually see what that looks like from just going to the other side. We could literally go to the other side and look at it. Oh no, because I put in another diag- Oh. Okay. I'm going to say straight up, this is not better. At least as is. I think I'm going to workshop this. And then we'll come back when we're not being pushed by a water stream. 
And uh, I don't know, try and figure out a better way to do this. The core concept of the shop is sound, but we need it to look presentable too. So anyway, here we go. Time skip. I have returned down here to the future home of Joe Hills' Mixolotls. And I started laying out the basis for like a rounded bucket. And as I was digging this out here, what did we find? More diamonds. Truly, this is an auspicious place to open up an axolotl shop. Wait! <laughs> there's a... <laughs> what? Okay. You know, we found one diamond, like, right there. And I thought, this is, this is a good omen. And then we just got five more diamonds already. Wow, okay, so clearly this is the right place to be opening a shop on the server if you want to find your wealth. We are just unlocking untold riches left, right, and center here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and work on getting the rest of this pixel art kind of built out with this new kind of more three-dimensional base we're working on. So here we go. Time skip. In the process of lighting up more of this, I stumbled onto more diamonds. I'm getting rich here in the shopping district. This is the Fortune 3 one. Yes. Yes. Look at this. Six more diamonds. Zombies, zombies everywhere. And I've got Scar's axe okay. to swing. This seems like an endless voidscape of inky night waiting to bring upon us blight that will just make our shops feel encloaked in some sort of oily, greasy smoke without end. There will be no place for creativity, my friends. Wait. False. Let me scratch that and reverse it. Look at this. We are lighting up a ton of this space, and there's a, even a cute little axolotl face. It isn't perfect. I am going to have to really heavily figure out how this is going to need to look in the long term and maybe not fly into it. Cleo and Jev heard that I was breaking ground today and they wanted to help me work on the entrance to the cave system. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> okay, so this is enough to make one stack of TNT, right? So here's what I'm figuring is oh, no. I'm just going to go down with an ender pearl to the bottom of this. And then mm -hmm. pillar back up with the TNT. I shocking. really wish I had a flame bow right now, Joe. Oh my god, I would shoot down there so fast. Okay, I mean, so nothing's um, ever stopped you. do we? What do we need? A button? Is that how that works? We do, in fact, need a button. Okay, I put a button on it. Oh, okay. Oh, oh! Nailed it. See, it worked perfect. Much better hole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a. I'm not saying it's a better hole. I'm saying it's a bigger hole. Well, That's true. I okay. agree. So here's what I'm thinking now is then we uh, let's kind of uh, create a valley, like a channel here that kind of connects that hole mm -hmm. to oh. this. I got this. Watch out. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, I didn't actually solved. bring a shovel. So this problem is. Problem solved. Look, it's perfect. Okay. <laughs> We're good. We're good, Joe. It's fine. I got this, buddy. Boom. Done. Okay. Mm. I know, it's, it's very oh. aesthetic. No. It's not often that I question Joe. What do you mean? You constantly question me. I mean, not as much as I'm questioning Three, two, you Three, right two, one, now. run! Oh, is it? Uh-oh. I mean, I, I that <laughs> Perfect. Hey, look, see, and we're going, there's, look, I see there's another cave. And we got friends. Yeah. Rude. I didn't even know this part of the cave was here. This is, this place is so huge. Oh my goodness. Wow. It is, it is rather extensive. Yeah. This is even more shopping district. Woohoo. Look, you know, okay. Cleo, this is, this is an iterative process, you know? Yeah. Joe, there you're is... supposed to be our demo expert here, buddy. Come on, man. Get Why together. would you assume that? Yeah, Joe's known, been known to blow things up, like, regularly. Let's see if this helps. 
Well, it can't hurt, is what we're well, saying. Well, look, look yeah. at that. That's way more visually pleasing, though, for the rest of the explosions. In the future, we're going to have this cool backdrop here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. That's valuable. I'm going to lie, I, I just I, came I, a little I, bit. You know, I was not saying anything. I'm just I'm just trying to make things um, accessible at this there, point. There's like a million zombies over here. I'm here for accessibility here. issues. Jeff, you're not too close to that wall, are you? Uh-oh. I am <laughs> literally standing on the wall. Mm. It's fine. How did it go? <laughs> hey, look at this. Uh, this is actually really visually pleasing. Well, there was some explosions, and then a zombie died, and then our chests blew up, which was awesome. Oh, our chests blew up. Oh, that's yeah. not as good. Yeah, we need those. Welcome to Mixolotls. Grand opening. See, this is this is what I call the front door, the grand opening, because it's so big. It's about 270 degrees open. And uh, then over here, you know, we've got some signs like, Welcome to Mixolotls, at Joe Hill's proprietor. And uh, also, you know, one diamond per button press. People can press whatever buttons they want, and then it'll dispense or drop an axolotl. Now, we've given them a bunch of names. This one doesn't have a name. Oh, no. Good thing we quality assurance checked it. So we'll go ahead and name this one Rickin. Boom. We can just put him right up there. He's no chicken. So with Rickin in place here, I think that every other one of these should be named. No other unnamed little axolotls here needing my help. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. Fantastic. So, any hermits who want can pay a diamond, press a button, and get an axolotl or two. Maybe three, depending on which button they press. We'll have to find out. But, okay. In the meantime, I need to head back to the surface because Jevin's Easter egg hunt is about to begin. Well, I say that. Jevin's Easter egg hide is about to begin? We have to hide the eggs before we can hunt for them. So I need to go collect the eggs that I need to hide and start setting those out. Time skip. Let's see what eggs are here for us to place in this Easter basket space. Hypno's Easter basket. That's not mine. Greens. Oh, no, it's greens. Okay, well, either way, that's not me. B-dub, Scar, Joe. Okay, here's Joe's Easter basket. Let's go ahead and see what's inside of here. Look at that! When Jeff commissioned the artist to make these, he told me that the artist had pulled my April Fool's skin, and so that my Easter eggs were gonna look like Rick Astley. But I just checked the Hermitcraft Discord. Apparently, our good friend Iskull, yes, that Iskull, who lives way up there that we Rickrolled recently, saw that, called up the same artist, and said, hey, I'll pay you extra to redo do Joe Hills' egg with his actual proper skin. So I guess Iskull's the reason that I changed into the Rickroll outfit, and now he's gonna be the reason I'm changing back out. How do you actually um collect these? Do you just, okay, well that wasn't it. Oh my gosh, look, it rotates. <gasps> okay, that is adorable. There we go, that feels much better. With summer being so close, you know, just having those uh, exposed arms is just way more comfortable. So thank you so much to our good friend Iskull who lives up on the hill. Um, oh, it almost looks like it says Bot Hill. I hope his hill isn't invaded by robots. We might need to go help him out after he, you know, paid an artist to make a new egg of me being cute. But either way, I am feeling good in my traditional outfit. We also have a wonderful note here from Jev, which basically says, hey, here's where you need to hide one of each of your eggs. Here's the coordinates for every hermit's base. So I'm gonna do that off camera so y'all don't tattle on me. I don't need anybody commenting like, Joe hid his egg in this coordinate. Um, Cause we wanna have this be a fun, fair game. And uh, then I'll go ahead and look for the eggs in my base as well in the next episode. So I think we should probably get heading home. Not, you know, enough to put on my elytra or be prepared to leave. But either way, we have a lot to do, and I'm going to go do it. You may have noticed that this episode was mid-roll ad-free. 
That's thanks to M. Lavis. In lieu of that mid-roll ad, I will now read a haiku of my own devising. Groundbreaking is fun. Ground exploding is more fun. Surrounded by friends. Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.